certainly relate with other families who kind of feel these ramifications of some PTSD and some, some of the woundedness that our soldiers do return with. And it makes me realize more than ever, it is now or never for the sake of America's finest that we have that commander in chief who will respect them and honor them. Former Alaska Governor Sarah Palin facing some blowback from pundits, politicians, and others for those comments on the stump for Trump yesterday concerning PTSD. Some of them claim she's politicizing the issue, but one of our next guests says she actually raises a good point that needs to be addressed. Uh, two gentlemen joining us now right here on the anchor desk with me, Afghanistan veteran and uh, now candidate for Congress, Brian Mast. And from our Newsmax newsroom, we welcome in our Newsmax health editor, Nick Tate. Nick is also the co-author of Da Vinci's Baby Boomer Survival Guide. Brian, you're a vet. You're also running for Congress now. Uh, as we're dealing with PTSD, what was your reaction to Governor Palin's remarks yesterday? Well, there's no question that whatever commander in chief you have, he has to, he or she has to absolutely make sure that they're addressing PTSD as a major concern for any service members coming home from whatever war that we're in. That's a fact of the matter. But to point to it and, and kind of allude to the fact that there might be a commander in chief that is maybe causing PTSD or, or, or is doing that, that's simply not the case. The yeah. fact is, President Bush and President Obama have both seen multiple deployments, lengthy deployments. It's. Uh, you know, the political battle over this, as I was listening to her remarks, I didn't hear her blame anybody, just simply say there ought to be a new commander-in-chief. But Nick Tate, uh, part of this, we understand, is in response to, uh, to what Sarah Palin and uh, her son are dealing with at home, correct? Well, that's right. I mean, her son has come back with what she says is suffering from PTSD that may have contributed to some of the uh, behaviors that led to his arrest early this week. And she felt like she needed to do a deal with what she called the elephant in the room by raising this issue. It does seem to me that she is politicizing it to a degree, but I want to also say, so I understand what veterans are concerned about there, but I, w I also want to say that let's hope that what comes of this kind of political discussion is, a, is more of a focus on what we can do to help veterans who are struggling silently and painfully in many cases with PTSD. And it's not just veterans who suffer. About 8% of all Americans experience some form of PTSD in reaction to car accidents, traumatic events in their lives, loss of a loved one, uh, witnessing or being a part of violent events. And I think that we're not doing enough to help those folks who may be suffering in silence. So my hope is that the firestorm that this, uh, co these comments have generated leads to some real help for folks who need it most. Well, Brian, tell us your story personally. Coming back, how did you deal with uh, all that you had to deal with coming back stateside? Well, there's no doubt. There's things that I had to deal with. You know, I lost two legs and a finger, and the fact is I saw some things in combat that absolutely branded some, some harsh, some painful, some brutal images on my soul. But really part of what helped me just to getting back to live life normally was finding a way to get back to peace. And there was a number of ways that I found peace in my own life. Number one, it was just recognizing that I'm mortal, that at some point in my life, my life is going to end, I'm going to die. And I got to peace by saying, well, I need to make sure that when my time comes, I can say I gave this world the best of what I had. I gave it everything that I had and I'm leaving nothing on the table, whatever moment that comes. I think that's an important part to getting to peace. The other side of it is this. I had some amazing friends that made sure when I came home, they were there for me every step of the way. I knew that if I was thinking about doing anything that might jeopardize my life going forward, that I could give them a call. They'd drive 20 hours for me. They'd get on a plane flight no matter what the cost. They'd do whatever it took to get to me if I was ever facing something. We've got to let our brothers know that. Nick, uh, we just heard Brian talk about his friends. What about family? Are, what are the dangers associated with PTSD for loved ones? Well, it, there, there is a tendency for folks to be depressed and, and withdraw, and that can make interpersonal relationships very difficult as well. Um, I commend Brian for taking the efforts to move forward and manage and deal with the, the difficulties that he had. There is successful treatment. There really is not a cure for PTSD, but various psychoforms of psycho psychotherapy, uh, cognitive behavioral therapy, and other kinds of therapy do work. Antidepressants in the short term can help folks. They do not cure 
They may help people deal with their condition, but there is help available. It's really important to turn to those people that you love and that support you, as well as get some professional help if you're really struggling with depression, anxiety, intrusive thoughts, and other things that may make you feel uh, that it's hard to get along with folks, be irritable, volatility. Help is available. Uh, Brian, 15 seconds remains. I just have to ask you this. Is, is running for political office in a weird way therapeutic? Absolutely. It of course is. You know, this is part of what gets me to that point to say, you know what? I'm finding purpose going forward in life. I'm taking my experiences that were behind me. I'm making sure to, to let people know that those weren't things that wounded me, but they're actually experiences that make me stronger. Everybody should be looking at these service members coming home and saying, you know what? You have a strength inside you that anybody that didn't go overseas, they don't have that strength inside of them. We will have to leave it there. Brian Mast and Nick Tate, you have our thanks.